Thank you very much. Please be seated. The Reverend Kathy uh, Kuna and your children, Fanisa, Jeremy, and Stephanie in absentia. Our mother of faith, Reverend Teresia Warimo, Archbishops present today, bishops present, anointed men and women of God, our leaders present, families of this, friends of this family, the great family of the JCC, and all mourners present, God is good. And all the time, ni salimiani kwa hewa bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe tena. I've also come to join the family. I came with my wife, Pastor Dokas. And um, <coughs> I wear two hats. First and foremost, I've come to represent my boss, President William Ruto. And I will be reading his message of condolence to the family after I make a few remarks. Secondly, I've come on behalf of my family, my children, Kevin and Keith, to come and celebrate the life of this great man lying here, Bishop Alan Kuna, a great servant of God, a man who in 25 years has built from scratch a great church with serious membership and branches all over the world. Mm -hmm. Reverend Cathy, I come with my family to say pole, to assure you of our prayers, and solidarity in this very difficult moment. We have come to say that this great man lying here has left a very enduring legacy, a legacy, Reverend Cathy, that you must build on. You are now the vision carrier of JCC. Must also have been a great teacher to you. I'm sure I have no doubt in my mind that as he was struggling with illness, he must have thought through about the future of this church and taught you and gave you teachings on how to lead, how to be a team leader, and how to be now the vision carrier of this great institution. Bishop Mark Karioki said he is a simple preacher. I'm, over, I'm also a very simple man. <laughs> and uh, many people have a problem with my simplicity to a point where they even call me a villager because of being simple. But I think it's good to be simple. Why do you want to complicate life with so many serious things? The history of this bishop is one of simplicity. From the slums of Kariobangi to the international stage, all the way to America. And uh, the fact that you are simple does not mean you shall not be great. There will be greatness based on simplicity. Listening to the eulogy, of course I must admit, because I'm a truthful man, <laughs> that the great pastor from the U.S. who read the eulogy, I only heard a quarter of it myself. <laughs> and I'm sure we are many. But most of you are not truthful enough to admit. 
you know, I, <laughs> I, I, I had about spiritual intellectual capital. Who's that? It's very serious business for me. <laughs> and I trust a few people employed by government to help me around. You have had, so you do some research, simplify it for me, and come and tell me <laughs> what it is all about. Bishop Mark Ariyoki quoted from the scriptures that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. We have heard and we have followed the leadership of this great general lying here. This man liked the truth. And truth is very enriching. Most Kenyans don't like the truth. Most Kenyans are dishonest. And many Kenyans have a problem with the truth. But since it is in the Bible, we shall continue telling them the truth, even if they don't like it. In my local language, they say, Makonyora Eduru. The quinine for malaria is very bitter. But it's the only quinine that cures what? Malaria. Bitter as it is. So we must continue to be truthful. And that is why I want to salute the courage of Magua, the brother to the deceased, for standing here to say that he has been an alcoholic and because his brother is gone, he wants to honor him by quitting alcohol. That is courage. That is courage. And the beginning of dealing with a problem is accepting that there is one. Once you acknowledge you have a problem, 50% of that problem is sorted. And then you deal with it. And that's where we are as a country. And I want to ask our leaders, let us not run away from reality. Let us not bury our heads in the sand. Let us accept that we have challenges as a nation. Once we accept we have challenges, we are done with 50%. And then we can look for solutions by accepting that we face a challenge. The challenge of illicit alcohol and drugs in this country is real. And many people want to run away from reality. And the admission of that great son here tells us that as a country, we must face head on the challenges before us. When we came into leadership with President William Ruto, we found a very serious challenge of illicit alcohol and drugs in the entire country. And most specifically, and in a very big way, the Mount Kenya region. And we have been dealing with that problem where our children were sleeping in trenches, where we could not get our young men to work. When there was labor, you could only find women and young girls. We are losing an entire generation. That is why we have taken it head on and we have made very serious strides. And that is why you heard me say last Sunday that the war on illicit brews and drug abuse must continue uninterrupted so that we save our children. And I say it as a leader, as a truthful leader, I put leaders on notice that anybody who tries to interfere with that war, we shall call you out by name so that the people of Kenya can shame you because we cannot allow the reintroduction of poison disguised as alcohol to come and kill our children. We want as a government to tell the merchants of death, those who thrive on making profits by manufacturing and distilling and distributing and selling poison disguised as alcohol, your days are numbered. And I want to take this opportunity to ask the Church of Christ and other religious organizations to join government so that together 
we try to save our children. We want the church to play a central role in mentorship, in counseling, in helping in rehabilitation of those who are already addicted so that we can save the next generation to be productive men and women for the growth of our economy and the development of our country. As I wind up, let me ask the children of Reverend Cathy to stay near your mom. Losing a companion is not easy. These are a couple that has been together for many years. It may look simple from the face of it, but in a few days, the loneliness will, see, will set in. So I want to ask the children to take time to spend with your mother. I want to ask her friends to hang around her. I want to ask the church people to hang around her and hold her hand so that she can get steady because it's not easy. <clears throat> Reverend Kathy and your children, I want to salute you because many people may not know Staying with a cancer patient for six years is a big and huge challenge. Cancer is devastating to any family in terms of emotions, in terms of finances. Ask me. My late brother, the governor of Nyeri, Derito Gashagwa, was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. In the year 2014, we stayed with him for four years trying to save his life. I traveled with him to London, to the US, to India. And the experience drained us as a family, shattered our finances, and we have never recovered to it. What this family has gone through is not easy. Please hold them in prayer and solidify around them. I want to salute you because I know what it means. And cancer is also very painful. And close relatives try to share unsuccessfully the pain of their patient. This servant of God has undergone a lot of pain and the family has tried to share the pain. So as we move on as a nation, we have made many interventions as a government to come up with an insurance scheme to cover chronic illnesses because the cost of treating cancer out of this country is beyond many families. As we speak today, many families in this country have harambes every weekend trying to raise millions of shillings to support their loved ones who are suffering from the cancer. I am very encouraged that now we have equipment in this country. The Kenyatta University Referral Hospital today has a PET scan. That scan was only available out of the country many years, several years ago. Today we have equipment in our hospitals that can help in early diagnosis because most of these cancers, if detected early, can be managed. So it's something that we are doing as a government, and I want to say that a lot of progress is being made to come up with an insurance scheme that will help families who have chronic illnesses, again, to improve the equipment in our hospitals so that people can get attention here in the country, which is a little bit more affordable. So I want to just encourage the family and to see that um, we are together and the church, you have a new leader, the pastoral team, the management, and the congregation. Please support her to succeed. Support her. A leader is as good as the team that supports that leader. That is why we support President William Ruto for his very pragmatic and courageous decision to dissolve his cabinet and come up with a new team 
that is focused and competent to help him in the management of the affairs of this great nation. And I want to ask the church and all Christians to pray for our president to pick the right people. God has given him a chance to come up with a good team of patriotic Kenyans who are not corrupt, who are not arrogant, who are not vomiting on Kenyans, who are serious on service delivery. Our president needs your prayers. Are you going to pray for him? Please pray for him. And I'm sure God will be merciful to him. God, he'll get God's favor to pick a good team to put our country on the right trajectory. So as we pray for President William Ruto to pick the right team, you as a church do the right thing. Support Reverend Cathy to succeed. And you don't have a choice because our brother who is lying here has left a very great institution. You cannot go back. You can only improve it. Finally, on a light note, I heard Bishop Mark Karioki say that people who are here found the Digwa is different. I too am in that boat. I was here in the Digwa 31 years ago. I was a young district officer in charge of Kiamba, where the Degwa is. Where we are was land with coffee owned by a company called the Degwa Company Limited. And I oversaw the subdivision and giving titles to the owners of all these properties that now have been developed. I'm so proud what I have seen the development that has taken place. My only regret, and Pastor Dokas knows, is that I had also bought one plot, three quarter, and I sold it at 800,000 then. <laughs> and it's a great mistake that I made. <laughs> because when I came, I asked, I'm told here now a plot is 35 million. Had I been patient, I would be worth 35 million today, but next time I'll make a better decision. And uh, finally, uh, Pastor Dokas, you have heard the sister to Reverend Kuna say that when they were quoting, uh, he banged her car. You know you banged my car when I was quoting you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I had a small car, an alpha suit, she, she banged it. So, you know. So, with those very many remarks, I have uh, the condolence message from the president. I'll read it, and before I do, I have a few leaders here. Let me just introduce them. Uh, they will not be able to speak. There are new challenges. Where we are, we are going to church now. <laughs> Our leaders are not being allowed to say anything. To <laughs> you. So, for the time being. Uh, we have Senator Veronica Maina. Please clap for her. Nominated Senator. <laughs> we have our women rep for this great county, Anne Wanjiko Wamurada. We have the Honorable Sabina Maito Chege. We have we have a very great young man from Umeas. You see him on TikTok, the Honorable Peter Salasia. <laughs> we have the Member of Parliament for Starehe, the Honorable Amos Mwago. We have the immediate former women rep for Akibia, the daughter of Zion. The Honorable Kate Waruguru. And of course, we have our bishop, who is also a leader. Honorable Bishop Margaret Wanjiro. That is the, the leadership that I have. Uh, 
Do, do you want Pastor Dokas to say hi? Yes. She of the, the boy child. Who is? Oh, oh this is our, our presidential candidate. Yeah, yeah. And you know, Kabisa, and I say, I want nobody to accuse the people of Mount Kenya of being tribal. The reason is one. In the last election, Mwaura was a presidential candidate. The people of this region never voted for him. <laughs> they voted for William Ruto and Raila Odinga. Are we tribal or we are not? We are not. If we were tribal, we would have voted for this man. Sindio? Asande sana kiongozi. Pastor Dokas, wewe kuja hapa useme jambo. So you mama anapigania boy child. I say my jambo then ni some Bwana sifiwe. Please greet me. And maybe you can do a celebration clap for our general, our garant soldier, our bishop, our brother, our father, our friend. Our sister, Kathy, Kuna, and your family, our mother of faith, Tracia Wailimu, as you always say, you have said many times, it is very hard for a mother to bury a son. It's supposed to be opposite. So we condole with you, gracious bishops and pastors and the house of clergy, saints of God and all those who have come to mourn our brother. I will not speak much because you see the head has already spoken. But I'll just speak to my sister Kathy and remind you what our brother would be saying now. Before the foundations of the earth, this God have the last say and he will make a way. Before the predicament came, he had already made a way. Before all this tragedy, tragedy struck, he made a way for you and your children. He will keep you, and all I ask you is to retain three things, faith, hope, and love. The greatest is love. Love what he loved. Move with the move of God in the vision of God, in the dream that he taught you to live in. Because in six years, God gave him the opportunity to mentor you and to give you the way and the answers to all the mysteries that you needed in leadership to take JCC as a movement to the next level. You are not only now the reverend, but you are the bishop. <laughs> the mother whom they will look up to, and you are capable because before the foundations of the earth, he knew you will be here. He will be with you now, not as a God you have always served before, but as Jehovah God, your husband, man, and father to your children. God bless you. See, I thought maybe when you pick coffee, because of Abu. Living with a pastor when you are not one is also not easy. Mimi nangangana, is you? I have the message uh, from President William Ruto. Let me read it and then uh, I hand over uh, to Reverend Kathy. Condolence message from His Excellency William Ruto, President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander in Chief of Kenya Defense Forces, to the family and friends of the late Bishop Alan Kuna. I've lost a true friend and an extraordinary man of God. 
Bishop Alan Kuna was a general of the word of the Lord who founded the Jubilee Christian Church. He was a firm faith leader whose sermons were stimulating, authentic, and targeted. Beyond the pulpit, Bishop Kuna was focused, hardworking, and played the lead role in uplifting the needy. We will remember him as one of the most potent spiritual leaders to ever serve our country. May Bishop Kuna's spirit live on through the, congreg the congregants, his fellow church leaders, and the people that he touched. Our prayers are with Reverend Kathy and the family, their loved ones, and the Jubilee Christian Church fraternity at this sad moment. May we draw comfort from the word of the Lord in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 22. So you have sorrow now, but I'll see you again. Then you will rejoice, and no one will rob you of the joy. Rest in peace, Bishop Kuna, signed William Samoy Ruto, PhD, CGH, State House, Nairobi. Asantene sana, may God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Your Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya.